Hello, my name is Brandon Burrill, owner and operator of Quick Water Heater and Filtration Company located in San Diego, California. In this short video, I'm going to show you how to do a professional tankless water heater flush just like we would do in the field. I'm going to break this video down into two parts. The first will be actually doing the flush and then while the flush is happening, you'll have nothing to do. Come back to this video and then I'll show you how to do the rest of the servicing while it's flushing itself. Let's get started. Before we get started on the flush, um, I wanna make a note. If you have a water softener, you do not need to flush your water heater. You're wasting your time. There's no mineral buildup and there's nothing to get stuck in there, so you can just stop right now. You will wanna move on to cleaning the filters out and that's about all you'll have to do if you have a water softener. Also, if you live in one of the red areas on this map, you're gonna to wanna to double up on your flushing. So if you live in the southern part of the United States or any area where there's a red dot on the map, you're gonna to wanna to double up every six months instead of every year. And also, if you have four people in your home, pretty much regardless of what territory you're in, you're gonna to wanna to also double up. So every six months instead of once a year. Okay, time to flush. You're gonna need some basic components, a small sump pump. Um, the larger sump pumps sometimes won't have a hose connection. You do not want that one. This little guy has a regular style garden hose adapter. That's what you want. Two hoses, these will fail every other year or so the acid eats metal and they will start to corrode and you will need to replace them. And then a five gallon bucket. Inside the five gallon bucket, we have basically powdered acid and this is gonna flush out the heat exchanger. So first thing we're gonna do is add about a gallon and a half or two gallons of water into here to turn the powder into a solution. Another thing that I'm gonna note is we're gonna wanna clean out the water filter inside the unit before we start the flushing process. So let's go ahead and do that. More than an eighth turn of pressure on there, you know something's wrong. All right, before we do all this, let's make sure that we're isolated and all the water's out. So what you're gonna do is these two valves here, basically this is your cold in and this is your hot out. We're gonna isolate the water heater by turning off the both of the valves. Now it's not connected to the house at all. It's only connected to itself. So what I wanna do is drain down some of the water so that when I do this filter, it doesn't come shooting out at me. So that and we'll let some more air in on this side. Without any air coming into the system, it will take a little bit to drain down. Let's see if we can get this filter off. It might drain out of here faster. All right, there we go. So here's our filter. If you look, oh boy, what is inside of there? Not sure if you'll be able to see that, but inside the filter there's a Basically this is stuck on calcium and magnesium from the pipes. You can see that, that's what came out of here. So we're gonna go ahead and just flush this with some water and get it cleaned out. All right, filter's clean. We can go ahead and put it back in and tighten it down. You don't need to go crazy with the tightening. It's actually sealing on a gasket, not from you tightening it. So over tightening, it's not a good idea. Next, we need to let a little water into the system and fill up our bucket. So this is off. If this is on, you will get water all over the place. So we're just filling it up. And you can do this with a garden hose or your sink or wherever, but I'm doing it right here because it's close. All right, so now I have my flush solution created and I'm going to put the sump in the water. First, I guess I'll connect these. Now remember, if you have a water softener, none of this is necessary. Also, a water softener prevents minerals from entering the home, which means that your fixtures will last forever. If you're the guy who's like, oh, I don't like slimy water. <coughs> it's all slimy. It's not slimy, it's clean. You just never shower in clean water, and therefore you don't know. The sump's fully filling up. Move this off to the side. Now, we need to put in the return hose back into the sump. So what's gonna happen is the water is gonna be pumped out. And let's make sure that guy stays in there. Gas is off, power's off. Now the system's sleeping, and we're gonna plug in the pump Let's let the water in and let the water out. And remember, we have got this off and that off. This is the city in and the hot out to the house. 
So you can see our pump doing its job. All right, so now we are gonna let this bad boy sit here for about, for good measure, go ahead and do 45 minutes and just let it hang out there. If you don't have service valves, which you'll see are right here, I'm gonna show you how to do this without the valves. So basically what you would do, you're gonna have a three quarter nipple right here as well as right here. You're just gonna connect these garden hoses. You're, you're probably gonna have some sort of supply line here. If not, and they hard pipe them right into the system, you're screwed, no flushing it, nothing you can do. But if they used a flexible hose, this is a gas flex, but if they used a water flex, you can just unscrew it and then mount your hot to your hot and your cold to your cold and you're all good. I would not put back on the same supply lines that you took off. Whenever you take them off, always replace them. They're relatively cheap, they're like $15 a piece. Just to be clear, these are isolation valves. So what these do is allow you to shut the city water off and the hot out to your home and allow you to tap right into here without messing with the with the exterior plumbing. They're designed to service your water heater. The next thing we're gonna do is clean out the air filter. And in order to do that, there are four screws right at the top here. And then at the bottom, I already got them out here. Here, there's only four screws that hold the plate on and that's all you need to know. I would recommend not using a impact or a drill and rather just use a hand screwdriver. That way you don't cross thread. I have two set up just for demonstration purposes, but that's the only reason they're both aligned here. The water heaters are very much like a car. They need to suck in air that gets burned and then they spit it out. When they do the intake for air, we wanna clean the air so that it doesn't wind up getting stuck inside the heat exchanger during the combustion process. So that little filter back there, we're gonna clean that. That's a must. If you don't do that, you're gonna get an error code. So let's take care of that. All right, pretty simple. We just have one screw right here. And the whole filter comes out. So these are the newest generation, the S2 model Navian. If you are trying to flush an older water heater, one, beware that you may have corrosion that has eaten into the pipes of your heat exchanger and when you remove it, you're thinning out the wall and then when the heat blasts in there, it's like it's possible to cause a leak. Um, it definitely has happened before. If you don't know what you're doing and you've never serviced your water heater, I would say just leave it alone. Don't mess with it. If you go back in there, remove all the minerals and put the acid through the system, it sometimes will cause a leak. It just happens. In the video, we're using the Navian units to demonstrate. These are the units that we install. If you happen to have a Renai, a Bosch, a Noritz, a Tagagi, they can all be flushed too, but they have very specific instructions on how to open all the valves inside of the system so that the fluid makes its way through the whole system and not just half of it. Because if you're gonna go through this process, you wanna make sure you get the whole heat exchanger and, and not just some of it. So if you wanna find out how to do that, we have specific instructions on our website. You can just go to Google, Google tankless water heater service. You'll find quick water heater. And then on there on the resource page, you'll find everything you need for your specific tankless. If you happen to have a Noritz brand, or a Renai brand, they have a different heat exchanger. You'll see the Navian units are pretty compressed and this unit is not meant to be taken apart or messed with. That is different than a Nortz. In a Nortz system, they want you to take out the burner assembly on the bottom and blow air up into it and basically clean out all the fins of the heat exchanger. Personally, I think taking the vent off and blowing down so that everything falls out the bottom is the way to go. With the Navian, they don't want you touching it, which is great. You don't have to service the heat exchanger, but in a Noritz or a Renai, they do. Again, all you have to do is Google tankless water heater service in San Diego, and then you will find our website with all the resources on how to do that. Okay, so while your unit's flushing, you're also gonna wanna clean out what's called the dirt trap. And you just pull this little two-pointed pin out, and then just gently pull down, and you'll see all sorts of junk stuck in here. This is pieces of shavings from, looks like a drain, little pieces of metal, all sorts of junk will get stuck in here. So clean that out, wipe it with rag, and uh, make sure that you keep the, there's some silicone lube on here. You wanna keep that on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and re and put more silicone on here. After you've got a little bit on there, put it back in and that is clean and ready to go. 
Okay, we live in Southern California in San Diego. The water is extremely hard. The water passes through the heat exchanger, gets stuck inside of there, and then we're using an acid to remove it. Acid and metal don't like each other. They actually, acid will eat metal. So the fact that you're putting acid into your system really is just kind of a dumb idea in general. What I think you should do is buy a water softener and never touch the inside of the unit again. The only thing you'll ever have to do is service your water filter if it clogs up and same with your air filter in the unit. Otherwise, you won't be touching anything in here because there's no minerals to begin with. Okay, now that we've finished this flush, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to properly disconnect everything and then flush out the unit so we get all the acid out and then we're gonna reconnect it and fire it up. Well, first things first, we have it isolated off of there. Let's drain this back in here. And then one thing to note, you wanna go ahead and pull the water filter one last time, tap it out, clean it out, make sure that it's debris free before you reinstall it because if anything was moving through the system, it would have gotten trapped in here. All right, so we're gonna disconnect this, disconnect the hotline, and you can see the system is draining itself down. See that? All right, so we're basically gonna wait for all the water to come out. I'm gonna find the hotline. This is hot. What we're gonna do is we're gonna let a little cold in, and we're gonna flush out all of the, the acid that's in the system. So I have a five gallon bucket here. You could also connect a garden hose to the hot side, and then just open the cold water line here. Close that. We definitely don't want that going on us when we're showering. So we're gonna flush it all out here. Remember, your isolation valves, that red valve needs to be perpendicular to the pipe so that none of this goes in your system. So I'm gonna flush it when I'm four or five gallons through it, clean it all out. And then once we're done, we're gonna make sure that these are off. Disconnect your hoses. Put your cap back on. So these are gonna stay off, that's off. Disconnect this back on and remember if you don't have isolation valves you will want to buy two new supply lines and then hook them up so we can open the hot water and the cold now the system is completely flushed and we should be good to go we can plug her back in and then open the gas valve and that is how you do a water heater flush. If you have an older system, I'd, over 10 years old, don't touch it, just leave it alone. Don't flush it, you're not gonna do any good. You're gonna cause way more harm, leave it alone. When it starts leaking, replace it with a newer model. They've made huge advancements over what is, you know, what was 10 years ago technology. This stuff is double the efficiency and it doesn't have nearly as many problems. Also, when you get a tankless water heater, get a water softener. It's that easy. We've done 10,000 installations. We know exactly what happens when you don't have a water softener. It's not fun. That's why people talk trash about tankless online. The water sucks. It's no mystery. We live in paradise. Water comes from up north, collects minerals, drops them right in your tankless, and kaboom. It's that simple. Get a water softener, enjoy the benefits in your home, and don't worry about flushing your water heater. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that it was informative. If you have anything related to a water heater, tankless, or a water filtration system that needs servicing, give us a call. We're happy to help you. You can find our number on our website and right here. Thank you for watching and have a great day.